for us, if you don't even have money, it's at least to win. We have to deprogram because we have been in a world of, you know, we have to deprogram and we have to reprogram our mindset. We have a poor mindset. That's why you see in Africa, yeah, we have countries, but we don't really have countries. Our countries are not really countries. We have to be honest on that. Because today, we cannot decide whatever we want. What we want. Because there's always the country of the West who come to tell us how to live, how to do that, how to decide this, how to decide that. We are all, we look like 10 decades backwards. 10 years, sorry, 10 years backwards. Because there are so many things that we do that don't make sense. Because we don't, we are a population who don't want to be educated anymore. You compare the time of our parents and those of today. People of the generation of our parents were goal-oriented. You will ask them questions, what do you want? They were more brave, what do you want? They will tell you, I want to, I want to. And most of their life, they will try to consecrate consecrated in the goals they have. My generation, most of the generation that we have now, they invest in women and in appearance. Men, a man who has no goals actually will be destroyed by things like women, like alcohol, like party and so on. A man who has vision we not invest in that. A man who has vision will be reading because he needs to know how to navigate, how to go, what's going to be the step to get into the goals he has, the plans he has. Okay? And we are not educated. You have to be honest on that. We are losing. We don't read anymore a lot. Especially if your country has been stuck, locked in the world, in his own world forever. Of course, you don't understand what's happening outside of the world. It makes way, it makes sense to me. But books are the only way for us to really change. The books are people who have given to you the knowledge and the experience of life and the skill. They give it to you in books. Things that your parents cannot do every time or do everything. Okay? So we need... We need, and I talk to myself, to get back to this habit of reading. That's the only way we can change because what we need to do is what is important. Reading is important. Educating ourselves is very important. Like, i give you a simple example. There was a country in Africa, because people are so allergic to today. I remember, I don't know, I was very young when the war happened in that country. And people were talking about lands, the farmers, white farmers, and everything in that country. And in that country, maybe I'm wrong, you can correct me on that. In that country, the leaders who wanted the, the country to be free from the white farmers and whatever you call it, whoever you call them, sorry, um, want, want to give the farms, the lands to the population, okay, the Africans. The truth is what? This is a situation that I, I, it's just an example. You don't know how to manage or take care of a farm, for example. Someone give you that to you without, without even having a skill or a knowledge of that. The fact that you work for someone doesn't mean that you can manage and hear and and you know and work that in your way i give you an example it's cool or in work you have for example those who are engineer and those who are technician the technician doesn't think like an engineer that's why the engineer is higher than the technician okay so when we give a situation to handle that to manage it an engineer we know how to do some of this, most of the thing. The technician will need the engineer to tell him what to do. So when I want to go back to the farm, okay, example of the land, the farms, you have never been able to handle how it works, okay? You like it, you don't like it, 
it's a fact. And you think that someone who is not educated on that will really, will, you think that someone who is not educated on that will really know how to manage it? It's not going to fall in a way? You know? Sometimes we have to be honest on some of the things that we do. It's not about emotion. It's about critical thinking. It's about thinking, a mindset. Okay? I give my simple example. My father owned two land, okay? Two big land for a family, you know? My brother, my sister, my mom. There is one who is bigger than the other one back home. And I have video on that. I have many videos on that. When you enter that land, I'm telling you, I don't know where to start. But I remember that when my father was alive, he was working that even though he was, even he was also doing his own job. So that job of, of holding, of taking care of a farm, it's not anyhow. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of investment. So when I went back home, I didn't, I, when I went back home, I didn't know what to do. I remember seeing my father, but I didn't know what to do. I had a situation in front of me. We have to work because the moment you leave the land and you don't do the farming work and you don't do anything, it's falling apart. Seriously. You have to clean the complete por uh, parcel. I don't know how to say that in English. Oh, you have to clean it all. And it takes a lot of money to clean all this big, you know, place, land, acres. So I was back home. I couldn't do much. Because I didn't know how to do it. I thought it would be easy. No. Because when you have a land, you want to do a farming project. You want to, do, you want to be a farmer in a way. You need to know how the soil works. I didn't know that. The soil, you have to, if you don't know, you have to hire people who study what we call in French agronomy, uh, engineer in agronomy. That's how we call them in French. People who know what to cultivate, where to cultivate what kind of soil you have. You know, they take a portion, they take a little bit of the soil, they make analysis and they say, this is to this, to that, that's not good for this kind of culture, that's not good for this kind of plant, and so on. You also learn that you have predators that can come. The first predator are what snakes. For instance, pineapple. I didn't know that snakes like pineapple. But I saw that they were always, they were always, they fed, you know, on the, the bite of the fed on the pineapple. And I remember my father was always, was always upset because we were planting a lot of pineapples at the time. So many pineapples. So it was really upsetting that this hard work under the sun and then this predator like the snake were coming and just bite it and messed up the pineapple. That's when I learned that the snakes need pineapple for their venom. They need to feed their venom. I didn't know that. When my father tried to do the fish farm and then he had also the pigs that he was for a company, he was uh, raising pigs for, the, for a company because my father was trying to do business at the same time also. Besides his job he had, you know, because people in the days, on the oldest, you know, that generation, they were very, they were really doing many, many, many things. They were doing many things at the time. So it wasn't only their job, they were also doing other things on the side. And my father was always impressed by the farm, uh, by the farm activities, the farming activities, because when he went to Ivory Coast, he saw how the president of Ivory Coast was, also, was already a planter. He was a man who was a man of the, he was planting a man of the land. He liked agriculture. The first president of Africost, uh, Ufwe Bwani. So my father, he wanted to live there because he was called by a company, airline company at the time. He was working for the Air Africa at the time, airline company. 
but at the same time, he was observing how the country was, and the president at the time was really encouraging people to do the farm. So he saw that people were intellectuals, but they're also farmers. So that really marked him a lot. That's why when he came back to my country, he said, why not? We have uh, our land, I mean, you know, the, the ground, the soil in equatorial Africa is really rich. You know, the, the central part of Africa, that part of Africa, when you talk about the soil, really, is seriously rich. So, for example, in my country, you can just drop seed somewhere. It will grow on its own. Within a few weeks, it's already growing like that. That's the kind of soil we have. So, 